How do you train the perfect corgi? The royal companion that you've always dreamed of. The corgi that you can take anywhere with you, making every outing and adventure seem just how many squeals and awes you'd get out and about. The corgi that when you come back home will greet you joyfully without leaving you an unwanted mess. Now yes, there are a lot of things to think about here and it can be overwhelming, but in today's video, I want to break it down into three simple points to show you how simple it can be if you focus on the basics. You can get the vast majority of the way there in terms of having your perfect corgi companion. The first thing I want us to think about is doing a bit of research to understand the heritage of the corgi, the temperament of the corgi breed and what they were bred for. The more that we understand, the more that we can understand the types of behaviors that they might display, and then we can be ready for them. We can be proactive with them. We'll know exactly how to overcome any challenges that they may be prone to have. At the end of this video, I'll have a link to one of our videos that talk about the 10 things why a corgi is not for you. Go ahead and give that a watch. But in addition to watching that video, do some other research that you can truly get a good grasp on the corgi breed. Corgis have become a very popular breed over the years, in large part due to social media. Obviously, the queen brought a lot of attention to the breed in years past, but social media took it to a whole new level. With their foxy ears, short legs, and waddling butts, the corgi obsession has led the breed to become extremely popular in more recent years. In the US, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi is now the 11th most popular breed according to the American Kennel Club. With a high demand of corgis, many people are interested in getting a corgi puppy without doing proper research and are suddenly shocked when they learn that their corgis were bred to be herding dogs and have endless amount of energy. Since they were not prepared to have an active lifestyle for the corgi, this leaves many of these dogs in unfortunate scenarios and many develop behavior issues due to lack of exercise or stimulation. In many cases, since corgis are prone to weight gain and have strong food motivation, many have become overweight. I share this because understanding our breed helps us cater a lifestyle that meets their needs. For those of you that have played the game Sims before, there are certain bars that need to be filled in order for a sim to be happy, productive, and healthy. In the same way, when we know what drives our corgis, we can cater and prioritize our activities to allow them to live a happy and fulfilling life. Since you've done your research, You'll know that a corgi is a herding dog. They were bred to run, work, and boss around larger animals. Now that we understand more about the corgi breed, we can start to empathize a bit more just how much energy they might have, how much exercise they actually need to be doing every day and to be happy and content. Does it now make sense why your corgi is so vocal, high energy, and demanding? It's part of who they are, therefore, what are some ways to satisfy this natural drive of theirs? You can literally take them to go sheep herding. Here in Ventura County, there are actually places to train your dog to go herding sheep. We took Gandalf once to get assessed, and it was clear that he was natural at doing it. Since most of us do not have random sheep around our neighborhood for our corgis to herd, finding a place where your corgi can safely play can satisfy that drive. While dog trainers do not encourage dog parks, it was actually a great place for Gandalf to get his energy out when he was a puppy. He loved to herd the poodles, but oftentimes, depending on the other owner's tolerance level, that type of behavior may not be acceptable, so I would often have to call him off. In our most recent Corgi Beach Day, Gandalf was a little too aggressive and t-boned this poor dog. I immediately called him off as he did his herding job just way too well. Now look at just how smart he is. Despite the disadvantage of speed, Gandalf was able to cut the corner and tackle the dog with precision. While this behavior is not one that I condone, I can imagine that doing this was extremely fulfilling for Gandalf. We rarely go to the dog park nowadays because I know Gandalf's herding instinct can get him into trouble. Some other dogs will not tolerate this rough play, therefore I want to avoid any retaliation to protect Gandalf. Therefore, I have diverted his drive to make sure he gets a lot of reps of frisbee and fetch. This is somewhat indirectly addressing the herding instinct as he is chasing after an object and sprinting at full speed. He gets his exercise in and is very fulfilled after every session. In many ways, excessive barking, chewing, and bad behavior stems from a frustrated corgi. Therefore, if we provide ways to satisfy their drive, many of these bad behaviors may go away. Therefore. 
Make sure that we're providing enough exercise for our corgi every single day. A 10 minute walk around the block will not do anything for these short little guys. They were bred to run, so let them run. And you will be shocked at what a difference that alone will do to the behavior and happiness of your corgi and the relationship that you will have with them. The next point pairs beautifully from the first couple of points we've talked about. Now we know what our corgi was bred to do. We know their kind of energy output that we have to make sure that we give them. We also should know what our corgi is obsessed with. Does your corgi love to herd? Does your corgi love to play with a certain toy? Find what your corgi is absolutely obsessed with and use it to your advantage. Some corgis love to swim. Some love fetching a ball. Others love a frisbee. For Gandalf, I know I've done a good job when he decides to do his happy roll after a fulfilling game of fetch or frisbee. It's often paired with a session of zoomies, which apparently only happen when your dog is extremely happy. If your corgi is doing the things that they were bred to do and love to do, you'll find that they'll be less anxious, they'll be less frustrated, and you won't see anywhere near the amount of problem behaviors that you might have faced otherwise. But not only that, you'll also have the benefit of being able to utilize their obsession as an advantage. Does your corgi run off when you take them out to the park? Well, if your corgi loves to play frisbee and you only let them off lead when you're playing frisbee, they'll soon learn that being off lead means they get to do their favorite thing. Does your corgi love to do obedience and trick training, but they're a bit of a nightmare in the house? Well, utilize times and places when they're frustrated in the house to do your obedience training. There are countless examples of how you can utilize your corgi's favorite thing to help them not just be more fulfilled, not just have more exercise, but for you to be able to control the situation and utilize it to your advantage. If you want to learn about how to teach the perfect fetch, check out this video. And below that is the 10 reasons why a corgi is not for you. Thanks for watching.